Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet where this is exactly that. It's going to be Just Vintage Crochet. This is my first video on this channel. I do have another channel called It's Not Knit and that is going to be that is mostly modern and my own patterns. There are some vintage videos on there, but likely down the road I'm going to transfer those over to this channel. But here we're just working with the vintage stuff. So the pattern that I chose, by the way, first, before we do anything else, I'm going to give a great big fat shout out to my friend, Rosemary. She graciously gave me so many of her beloved mother's uh, vintage crochet pattern books. And some of these are even her grandmother's. And she noted in some of them where her grandmother's writing is. And it is just so freaking phenomenal. I, these are, these are, precious treasures for me. So thank you so, so much, Rosemary. Love you, girl. So I'm choosing the very, very first bedspread. This bedspread was actually in another pattern book that I got from Rosemary, but uh, the wording in this one is much easier. I was so floored and thrilled whenever I came upon this pattern, but a little bit better worded. So this is the pattern that I want to make. They call this one Water Lily. In the other pattern book where I found this, it wasn't named at all, but it was still stunningly beautiful. Look at that. Let's see if I can get the sheen off of there. There you go. Is that not beautiful? So this is what I wanted to make for our first pattern. Before we get into more of the lacier stuff, I've been looking at this pattern for weeks and weeks and weeks now, and I have to make it. I've gone through everything I have to make it so let's just do a quick run through of some of these other patterns that we're certainly going to be playing with down the road oh yeah and I also forgot to mention this book is from um well I don't see a date I'm gonna say it's from the 40s Printed in USA. I don't see a date on this one. 99% of these books have a copyright date. This one does not seem to have that right where I can see it. But the majority of them are also from the 40s. Now I have got, like I've said in my intro video, I've got pattern books from the tens, but I also have some patterns from the late 1800s. So, I mean, we're going in hard on this vintage stuff, y'all. Look at that one there. Oh, you bet. We're going to do all of these. So, you know, just sit tight and wait for them to roll out. Of course, the, uh, the patterns on this channel aren't going to come out as frequently as on my other channel because I'm constantly coming up with my own stuff and if I don't make it, I'll lose it forever. So let's get started with this one. <clears throat> what we're going to need is, it says 400 yards, let's see here, Priscilla worsted sheen. This is gonna be bedspread cotton, so number 10 crochet thread. Uh, 400 yard skeins, 68. So 68 times 400, that's a lot. Um, this is, this is a heck of a project, but you don't have to make it as a bedspread. You can make these as, uh, pillow covers. You can just make the one tile just to challenge yourself to make a vintage, a piece of vintage art. In my opinion, it's art. You could literally just make the one tile. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make the one tile because I don't, I don't have time in my life to make entire bedspreads with everything I have going on. That'll probably come later on down the road for me. But for now, I'm just going to make the one tile. I would recommend you do that as well, just as a challenge, just as a personal challenge. Why not? Okay. So you're also going to need a size 7 crochet hook. And I went on to the conversion chart, not the uh, UK, US conversion chart, but the vintage to modern conversion chart. And this is a 1.65 millimeter. The closest I have is a 1.75 millimeter. I already did a little bit of practicing with this. This is going to work perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. All right. I'm going to set this up right here. Use my mouse to 
hold it open. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to print this. I'm just going to have to print this off so that I don't ruin it because it wants to close. Okay. It wants you to start off. Oh, I also recommend a, a row counter or a pen and paper and just mark off your rows. And I also highly recommend a stitch marker because these, uh, these leaves, lily flower portion is going to be worked in a continuous round. We won't be stopping at the end of each round and chaining one. It's going to be working a continuous round, so you're definitely going to want a stitch marker to mark your uh, beginning of your next row. So they say to chain nine and form a ring. I am op going to opt to do the um, magic circle just because I like the way it looks and works better, but... For those who don't do the magic circle, this is what you will do. Chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then you will come back to your very first stitch, your very first chain, slip stitch into that to form a ring. Then you will work 18 single crochet into the ring. Chain one, work 18 single crochet. I'm going to do the magic circle. Let me get you guys in a little bit closer here. Get a little bit of light. Okay. It was a little long. I just find the magic circle to be easier to work with when it comes to things like this. So chain one, now we work 18 single crochet into the ring. One, two, and three. I will be back when I have 18. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my very first so I don't get it confused with my chain one. That can happen. <laughs> I'll be back. I have my 18 single crochet I'm just gonna slip stitch to the very first single crochet in the round. And by the way, this is considered round one according to the pattern. You will want to keep track of your rounds. I split that. There we go. Okay. And now we work Round two, chain three, one, two, and three. Okay, chain three and work four double crochet into the same stitch as the joining stitch. Drop loop from hook, insert this into the top of the Third chain, draw up, okay, I know that all sounds confusing. We're gonna do popcorn stitches, so I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work out. So here is my joining stitch right here. We're gonna work four more double crochet for a total of five, counting the chain three. Now, I have not worked this entire tile. Um, I've only gotten as far as a few rows into the flowery part before I stopped and said, I can do this. Let me get on video. <laughs> so that's as far as I know. Three, four, and five. Draw up a little bit of a loop. Come over here to the chain three. Go into the top of the chain three, come around the back of your work, hook that loop, and pull it through the chain three like that, and that creates your popcorn stitch. Now you will chain two, one, two. And this is just, I'm now working just from memory because I remember how a lot of this started. So we're gonna skip the very next stitch over which is this stitch right here. It's kind of hard to see. Yarn over and in the next stitch after that, work five double crochet 
we're going to work popcorn stitches. So it's going to be popcorn stitch, chain two, skip one, make a popcorn stitch all the way around. You should have nine popcorn stitches total. Two, three, four, and five. Draw up a little loop. Come over here to the very first double crochet. Go into the top of it. Come over here and grab that loop and pull it through. Now you chain two, one, and two. Skip the next stitch, which is right here. Yarn over and in the next stitch after that, work your five double crochet and form your popcorn stitch. So this is the repeat all the way around. I'll do this last one here with you and then I'll be back whenever we get to the end of this round two. Three, four, and five. Come into the top of your first double crochet Hook up your loop, pull it through, push that little popcorn out, there we go, chain two, one, two, skip the very next stitch, which is right here, and in the next one over, start your five double crochet to form your popcorn all over again, then you will chain two, skip one, and do it again. I'll meet you when we get to the end and we have nine popcorn made. Okay. Now I have three stitches left. I've got eight of my popcorns made, so I'm going to, I already worked my chain two. I'm gonna skip the next stitch of my three. I'm gonna skip the next stitch and in the next one over, which is the middle, I'm gonna make my popcorn and then I will have one more stitch to skip right here on the end. So here we go. Two, three, four and five chain two skip this stitch and then it says to slip stitch into the top of the first popcorn made so it's not the easiest in the world to try to find the tops of your popcorn. Looking for my starting chain. My starting chain is there. This is the most struggling part is to try to find the top of your popcorn stitch. That's my chain there. So, okay. I'm gonna call that the top of my popcorn stitch. Okay. That's what your work should look like. Let me tighten this up a little bit. This is how everything should be looking so far. Now we're on to row three. And again, largely from memory, I know we're gonna to need to chain five, two, three, four and five and into the chain two space work a double crochet chain two and into the top of the popcorn stitch work a double crochet and I have found flipping it over and this stitch right here that's not the chain right on the back here's the back coming around the front and it leads you right into this stitch right here. And I found that is the top of the popcorn stitch. See how it's attached to the popcorn stitch? That's a little loose. Let me redo that. Here we go. Chain two. 
and into the chain two space between the popcorns, work a double crochet. This is gonna be the repeat all the way around. You'll chain two and work a double crochet into the top of the popcorn stitch. Hopefully you can see, here is the popcorn stitch, come around to the top and it's right there. Chain two. And work a double crochet into the chain two space. Chain two. And a double crochet into the top of the popcorn. Chain two. Okay, I'll be back. Here's the chain two space. I'll be back whenever we get back around to the beginning, right here at our chain five. Okay, coming to the end of round three, I've got one more chain two space. I've already chained two. Go ahead and work my last double crochet into the chain two space, chain two, and slip stitch into the third chain of our chain five. One, two, three. There we go. Now chain one, work a single crochet into the top of that chain three that we just slip stitched into. Work three single crochet into this chain two space. Oh, I guess I should mark that this is round four. Okay, three single crochet into the chain two space. one single crochet into the top of this double crochet. It does help to pull the three single crochet away so that you can access the top of that double crochet. Now, this is the repeat, three single crochet into the chain two space, followed by one single crochet into the top of the double crochet. And I do find it helps to pull on that double crochet a little bit, and you can see the hole right there that you need to work into. Now we work three into the chain two space. And then pull it open just a little bit and one into the top of the double. Three into the chain two space. One, two, and three. Pull on that double crochet a little bit. There you go. One into the top of the double. Okay, this is the repeat all the way around. Meet me when you get back around to the beginning and we'll end the round together. Just coming to the end now, I've got one chain two space left. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my three single crochet. One, two, three. <laughs> Come on you, there we go. Slip stitch into the very first single crochet. There we go. And let's take a quick look at the pattern. So now we want to work chain one and working in the back loop only of the very first stitch, the stitch we just slip stitched into, work three single crochet. The first one's going to be a little bit of a bugger. There we go. One, two and three. I would go ahead and use my stitch marker now. Mark that first of three single crochet just because you want to go ahead and get in the habit of doing that because now we are going to start working the, the, the petal portion here. And again, this has worked in a continuous round, so might as well go ahead and start working your working with your stitch marker attached just to get used to it. All right, now we're going to work in the next three single crochet, back loop only by the way, the entire petal area is all worked in back loop only. So back loop only, each of the next three single crochet, get one single crochet right into the back loop. One, two, 
two and three. Now the next stitch over, which is going to be the stitch directly over the top of your double crochet, back loop only gets three single crochet. One, oops, two, and three. Now once more, back loop only of the next three single crochet gets each one single crochet in them. One, two, and three. The next one after that, back loop only, gets three single crochet into the same stitch. This is the repeat all the way around. Two and three. Now you'll work three back loop only single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And into that next stitch over, which is directly above your double crochet, that one gets three back loop only single crochet. Two and three. Oh, I should have mentioned where this is the fifth round. I apologize. Round five. Okay, now we work one back loop only single crochet into each of the next three single crochet. And then in the fourth one over, the next one after that, it gets three into the same stitch of back loop only, of course. Now we work three into the same stitch, two, three. Then we work one into each of the next three back loop only, and three into the next one, back loop only. I will meet you when we get back around to the beginning and we will end this round together. See you in a minute. It just coming to the end of round five. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of homework, but I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'll be here to help you with it as we go. So, let me just remove my stitch marker because that stitch is kind of enlarged so I can see it now. Work my last three stitches here. One, two, and three. So here's how we're gonna end this one. We started with three single crochet. We're actually going to completely skip the first one. I know I had a stitch marker in it. That was out of habit. We're gonna completely skip the first one as if it doesn't exist. And we're gonna jump straight over into the second one and start working our three, oops, back loop only, sorry, back loop only. Work your three single crochet into the same stitch. Mark that first single crochet. So that is one, two, and three. Now here is where marking your stitches will be very important. Now this stitch that we just marked is the beginning and the end of every round from here on out until we move on to another section of the tile. Now we will work five single crochet. Every round we're increasing by two. So now we will work five single crochet, back loop only, the entire flower area once more. This entire area here is all done in back loop only. So every round is back loop only. So let's work five single crochet, one in each of the next five single crochet, I should say. Two, three, four, and five. And then your sixth stitch over, which will be your center stitch. You can see it right there. That one gets three in the back loop only. One, two, and three. Now we repeat the next five single crochet, back loop only, each one gets a single crochet. And this is the progress of how every row is going to work. I, I worded that backwards. This is how every row will progress. <laughs> Let's 
see here. I wasn't counting. So now I will look. There is one, two, and three. So this is my middle one here, and it gets three. So your next row up, row seven, this is row six now. Row seven, you will do the same. Of course, I'm gonna jump on here for the next couple of rows and we'll work them together and you should have it down pat by about row eight or nine. Um, but yes, every row is going to add two more single crochet between the points. And we will do this until we have a total of 25 single crochet that needs to be worked between each three single crochet point. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish working this all the way around. I will be back and we will work round seven together. So that's gonna be five single crochet back loop only between each point of three single crochet, okay? Okay, so just coming up to the end of row six, Here's how this is gonna work. We started off with three double crochet at the very beginning of this row. But like I said, we're gonna be working in a continuous round. So the first double crochet of our start, I'm sorry, the first single crochet of our starting three single crochet is going to be our fifth stitch to complete the repeat. So I just worked these three double cro single crochet, forgive me, I'm sorry. I was just doing a pattern where it was all double crochet. I'm so sorry. So here I have worked three single crochet. Now I need five because there's supposed to be five between the points. One, two, three. Let me use my hook to help better point this out. One, two, three, four. And my stitch marker is in number five, which is number one of our first three single crochet. See how that works? So we're going to work back loop only single crochets into the next five, including our, our fifth one being the one that the stitch marker is in. And then we immediately jump into working our three single crochet into the back loop only of this one. And now we will work seven single crochet between the points. And then the next row it will be nine. And then the next row it will be 12 because we're gonna be adding two single crochets between the points. We will do this for a total of 12 rows of this, but not 12 rows in total. We're going to work until we're at 16 rows. So now we're starting row seven. So we will do this until we have a total of 16 rows of the entire pattern, but we will have 25 single crochets to work between the points. Once you have 25 single crochet to work between the points, that is your last row, the one where it's 25. So let's do this one here. One, two, three, that one split, four, and five. There we go. Now we start working our three single crochet point. One, two, and three. Go ahead and put your stitch marker in. Just count three stitches back. One, one, two, three. There we go. And now we will work seven single crochet between the points because we added two. One, two, three, four, five, six, and here's our three single crochet. The first of them makes seven. Now the second one is where we put our three single crochet point, all back loop only, of course. Two, and three, now we work seven single crochet again. Oops. One, two. Okay, that's 
three, four, five, six, and if we look, there's our three single crochet. The first one makes seven. Now the next one over, which is the middle one, back loop only gets three single crochet, okay? And then your next round, let me just complete this peak here. Your next round, <clears throat> be sure you're keeping track of them, will be round eight of the total project. And you're gonna do just like you did before. You're gonna work your three single crochet then you're gonna work seven. The stitch that your stitch marker is in will be stitch number seven. Then you will work your three single crochet. Now you will have nine single crochet between the two peaks and on and on and on. So the pattern says there should be a total of 12 rows of this, but overall we will be in row 16 of the pattern by the time we reach the point where we can stop. And that's gonna be, once more, whenever we have 25 single crochet between the peaks. Okay, so I will be back whenever we are ready to move on to forming and shaping the flower. So that'll be whenever we are at the point where we have achieved our 25 single crochet between the peaks, or row 16. See you then. Okay, so. I have finished my 16th round. There are 25 stitches between each point now, except for I've only worked 24 because I'm, I was saving to work my last stitch with you guys. Now I read on ahead because the next part had me quite stumped since last night. I really didn't understand it at all. So I played around with it a little bit. That way it wouldn't um, drive you guys crazy having to watch me try to, try to figure this out on camera, but it is very confusing. First, just so that you know what it was I was dealing with, let me read to you and, and let you read with me, actually, the instructions. First of all, the whole pattern is written in like one, one full paragraph. So my eyes get lost very easily. Uh, thank goodness I have these. Actually, these were Rosemary's mothers. They were already in a pattern book. So thank you very much, Miss Rosemary, for leaving those because they are coming in handy. Okay. And it says next round, 16th round. We already did that one. Uh, slip stitch over the first eight stitches, then fold and join pleats as follows. Place next point to last point, right side of work, inside fold. Work one single crochet in next stitch on both edges. Inserting hook under top thread of both stitches. When they say under top thread, that means back loop only. Join the next four edge stitches the same way. Chain four, fold the next two points together, skip eight stitches from point, and join the next five stitches of both edges. Repeat until all the petals are joined. If that made your eyes cross, don't feel bad. It made mine cross too since last night. I finally got them uncrossed. So here is mystery solved. First of all, yes, one and two. So we're going to slip stitch into the first eight stitches down. We're not going to work three double crochet into the same stitch like we have been. We're done making points. So we go right into slip stitching. We're gonna do eight stitches. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, what they want us to do is take this next point and fold it in half onto this point. Let me show you. We have the two points here. You're simply going to take them and fold them in half in on each other. This is the right side facing, so you want right side touching right side, just like this. And then you will join the two back loop onlys with a single crochet. 
ultimately they want you to do this over a total of five stitches. So one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here we go. Make sure that I am lined up point for point. One, two, three, looks like I'm going to have one extra stitch. Somehow I wound up with one extra stitch. So let me come down one because I want this to be right. Although I bet in the grand scheme of things, it don't matter. So maybe I missed one stitch here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I got it right. Is it lined up right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, I need to take this little one here. It's kind of mashed down. I know this is so painstakingly dull. I apologize. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Now we will chain four. One, two, three, four. Come over here and you see we have these two points now. This portion is already folded in, but we have these two points now. So we will match the points together, as you can see like this. Grab our chain four, and then it said to count eight stitches down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, I suppose I should have done that. Well, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So come down one more. There we go. One, two, we have to stitch five of these together. Three, four, and on the very end right here, we have five. Then we chain four. One, two, three, this is going to be the repeat, four, open it up, we have our two points, and we bring them together, and we count eight stitches down, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then one further down from that. So I will come this way, back loop, and back loop. Let's bring this back here. That is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I'm going to finish doing this all the way around. Now we chain four, two, three, four, and we take our two points and we bring them together and we just repeat all the way around. Okay, so I will be back whenever I am done joining all of the pleats. Let's look at them though. Let's look what we have so far. Ooh, that's pretty. That surely is pretty. Yes, it is. That is gorgeous. If nothing else, 
if you get nothing else from this tutorial, make just the flower as an applique. Make just this as an applique. Is that not beautiful? Okay, guys, I will be back whenever I have all of my pleating done. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, here is the, what they're calling the water lily. Oh my God. Look how pretty. I love it so much. Here's how the back of it looks for reference. And then looking down this way here. So there it is. These are all of our little chain fours here. So it says to join. Let me back out a little so it's easier for you to see. So let me get reattached. Okay. There we go. Now it says to end with a chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then uh, end with a chain four, join with a slip stitch in the first of the five joining stitches of the first petal. Um, oh yeah, it's gonna be over here. Okay, there's the first of the five. Well, the first of the five is right here. It seems like it wants to go for, well, okay, first of the five. Follow the instructions, Karina. Okay, first of the five is gonna be right here. And slip stitch, okay. There it is. Oh my gosh, isn't that so pretty? Oh my God, I love it so much. Okay, now let's move on to the next round. Okay, one slip stitch in the next stitch, two single crochet in the next stitch, the third of the fifth turn. Okay, so we're working in the joining stitches now. So one slip stitch over. Oh, you know, let me rejoin that because yeah, that's kind of a not good. Join from this way, my bad. Join from this way. Okay, slip stitch over one. Okay. And then we work two single crochet into the next stitch, which will be the third stitch over. To single crochet. It's not saying back loop only though. I don't think we're working back loop only anymore. Okay, that is two single crochet into the same stitch. Now, one single crochet in each of the next 26 stitches. Then three single crochet in the next stitch. So I guess we're working in the chains. We're gonna treat the chains as a stitch, I'm assuming. So, okay, here we go. One. And then these are chain four, so four in each of the chains. Two. Three. Oh, that one came undone. Okay. Three. I'm not going to do all of these on camera. Just want to get through some of them. Four and then five. And then we work these five here. Six. Seven. You do that. Ugh. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten. And then work the chain again until I have completed 26 stitches. So I'll be back whenever I have 26 stitches done. But this is what I have done. Worked into the chain. 
not around the chain, but I have worked into the chain. Treated each individual chain like a stitch to work into. So I'll be back whenever I have 26 stitches. I've got my 26 stitches. Now it says to work three single crochet in the very next stitch over. So here we go. One, two, and three, and then we repeat all the way around. So we will work 26 stitches, and then in the 27th, work three single crochet, then 26 stitches. My guess is at this point, we're beginning to form the, the edges. Okay, so that's the repeat. 26 stitches, 27th gets three single crochet into the same stitch, then 26 stitches, and then in the 27th again. So I will be back when we come back around to the beginning. Let me go ahead and mark my very first stitch. So those are slip stitches, those first two. So here is my very first stitch. There we go. Okie doke, I'll be back. Wanted to pop back on here real quick before we finish this round. I took a very close look at the photo. I believe that we are meant to be working back loop only on this round that we're currently working on. If you look at the ridges, that is definitely back loop only. So work back loop only on this round that we're currently working on where we work the 26 stitches and then we put three single crochet into the 27th. Work back loop only, see? the ridge. There you go. Okay, so I just finished that first round we worked behind the petals. Now what it says to do is to, I guess we're going to skip over the slip stitches that we made, the first two slip stitches that we made, because now it says to, where is my two single crochet into the same stitch are right here so hard to tell and into that first stitch and we are working back loop like i mentioned just a bit ago work three single crochet increase so i take it we are still working in the round or in the continuous continuous round so in my first of three single crochet i will mark that now we have to work 28 stitches between the increases. So we will do that. And what it says to do, it says here, get my deal. I really should have printed this off. I need to do that. So I don't want to fold it or bend it. Okay. We are working this now three single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in each of the next 28 stitches, then three single crochet into the next, into the increase. See, into the center of the next point. Repeat from here all the way around, and then work four more rounds of single crochet, increasing in center of stitch point in every round and ending the last round just before the point, the increase. So just like we did before with the petals, so this is going to be work four more rounds. So they want a total of five rounds is what I'm translating here. So this will be round one, what we are working right here, what we are just now starting on. I'm gonna count, count that as round one of five. So I'm going to reset my stitch marker or row counter and I will work 28 stitches and then I'll come back at the next point and we can kind of work on this just a little bit together and then we will work our remaining four rounds after this round that we're currently working on. Okay, I'm at 26, 27, and then 28. And so the next stitch puts me perfectly in the middle there and I'm gonna put my three single crochet And there we go. Carrying on to the next point, which is right here. So 28 stitches across.
Nope. <laughs> I apologize about that. That's my microwave. Well, I mean, I don't know why I'm apologizing. It's a microwave. It's going off. <laughs> Okay, just coming up to the 28th stitch now. That's 27 and 28. Now we work our three single crochet into the next stitch. And we carry on. One, two, and three. I will be back whenever I get all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, just coming in. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Just coming to the end of this first round of five. So I'm going to move my stitch marker. And just like we did before, this is stitch number 28 right here. Now I will work my three single crochet increase in the next stitch over. One, two, and three. Count three stitches back. One, two, three. Put my stitch marker in there. I think I made these stitches a little too tight. That's okay. It'll still work. <clears throat> now, just like before, we have now gained two stitches on this side. So we have 28, 29, 30. So we should have 30 stitches between the increase points. So I'm going to do this over and over again until I reach round five on here, which will technically be round 22 total rounds of our whole pattern so far. Okay, I will be back whenever I am done with all of these rounds. Okay, here I am all done with my fifth round. Now it says two, just to show you where we're at on here. I moved, I moved my marker down and it says on the 23rd round, so we're on round 22 total of the overall pattern round 22 and it says to oops oh there we go okay and it says to slip stitch in next top stitch chain four one double crochet into the same stitch and if you look at where we're at we're creating like a little v-stitch right here okay um into the same stitch now here is the repeat you can tell because a little asterisk Chain one, skip one stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat from the, the asterisk seven times. Chain one, skip two stitches, one double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, one double crochet into the next. Repeat from the last eight times, ending with a double crochet, ending with a V stitch. Okay, so if you look at the picture, so I looked at it. This is what we are working on now. So we're going to make this little V stitch right here in the corner. And you can see a chain two is skipped here, or two, two stitches are skipped here. Two stitches are skipped right here. See where the large gap is? Right here. And again, right here right here so you can see what we're doing we are working seven stitches we're skipping two right here and then we're going to work the remaining and then form a little v-stitch in the corner and then do it over and over again here's another little v-stitch do that again where we work well i'll work the first with you so we can see exactly what the first count is but this is what we are working on now Okay, so work my last couple of stitches because I was saving those to work with you guys. And 
my guess is we're not working back loop only with these. I don't, yeah, it doesn't even look like it. It doesn't look like it at all. Maybe, I mean, maybe those could be back loops that look like little ridges for back loops to you. Hmm. Golly. Well, I suppose it does say to work back loop only until directed otherwise. It says that here in the beginning, so maybe it is back loop only. Maybe it is. Okay, maybe we'll just stick with back loop only. All right. So, oh, this is my last, last stitch here. Now we slip stitch into the top of the stitch here, the top of our point. And it says to chain four. I imagine that is for a double crochet plus chain one. Then we will work a double crochet into the same stitch. I did that back loop only. Now we chain one, skip the next stitch, and in the next stitch over, we work our double crochet. And how many stitches did it say to do this for again? Uh, seven times. Is that for a total of eight? Let's see here. Chain one, skip one, work one, double crochet. Seven times. I, you know, we shall see. I think it'll wind up being a total of eight. Okay, that is big. I'm wondering if I shouldn't just work those regular. Look how much that's pulling up on that. Hmm, I'm not the biggest fan of that, I gotta tell ya. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet into the next. Not a fan of how that looks. Oh, I don't like, I don't like how much that's stretching. Not a fan. I wish it would be specific in all these new sections like this. I wish it would say we're still working back loop only or, you know, that's the thing though with the vintage crochet. It's kind of vague. Kind of vague. Top stitch. This bread spread is composed. Uh, well, but this is what it looks like working through the full stitch. And I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm just going to take the creative liberty on this one and work the full stitch. I really didn't like how much it was stretching. Skip and then back loop here. How much it stretches on that back loop just over and over again. I, I'm just doing the back loops now so you can see. It's not, it's not, uh, I don't like it. That's like really loose. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what's the right thing to do. I'm just going to work the full stitch. I'm just going to work the full stitch. Of course, you guys can go the route you wish to go, but I am just going to work the full stitch. So let's see, what do we have here? One, two, three, four. Breaking the rules. Rules are made to be broken, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Skip. Oops. Two. That's seven. So am I skipping right here? Or do I go over one more? I feel like I go over one more. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I was just counting the spaces instead of the individual stitches. It says seven times. It says it says seven times more. Um, I'm going to try, I'm going to do one more, figuring it out, and then see how that looks. Okay, now it says to chain one, but skip two stitches, one, two, and then work eight. Let's see here. 
work this eight times. All right, let's see if the math works out with it. <laughs> Experimenting. Okay, one and skip. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. And then one more. Looks like we're gonna come up short. Chain one, skip one. What does it say now? So this is where I'm at now. Uh, eight times, ending with a double crochet in point stitch. Ooh, well, look here. This is where we have a little bit of an issue. I didn't make it to the point stitch. I would have been even shorter had I just done seven on this side, so... I'll be back. Let me figure out what's going on. Okay, so what I wound up doing to confirm what I need to do on the end here is I literally just counted uh, the stitches that they have worked here. So I was correct in working eight on this side, but they have 10 worked on this side. 10. That was not made clear in the instructions, but I have eight made so far. Let's see. Eight chain one, skip one, nine, chain one, skip one, 10, perfect. Then you chain one and into the top stitch, you work your double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Now, I know I'm not the crazy one here. I may be the crazy one here. Let's just look. Where did it say to do that? Let me zoom in so that I don't have to ruin these pages. Okay. Slip stitch in the top of next stitch. Chain four, one double crochet into the same slip as slip stitch. Oh, sorry. Okay, now we chain one, skip one, one double crochet into next. Repeat from seven times. That worked out to be a total of eight. Then we chain one, skip two stitches, one double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one stitch, one double crochet into the next. Repeat eight times. Oh, I see. I'm the one who read it wrong. They, okay, I read it wrong. So they account for one double crochet here, and then they account for another double crochet here. Then they say to repeat that eight times. That does equal 10. Okay, that does make sense. So we're going to do this all the way around. Chain one, skip the very next stitch, which is right here, and then the next one over. And again, I'm working both loops on this one. Work your double crochet, chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. Do this until you have eight double crochet worked, not counting the V-stitch. Once you have eight worked, you will chain one, skip two stitches. Then you will work your double crochet into the third stitch over and nine more after that, making a total of 10 double crochet before your next V-stitch, okay? I will be back when we get all the way back around to the beginning. Okay. Now we're going to end this round with a chain one. One, two, three, slip stitch into the third chain of the starting chain four. Now slip stitch into the chain one space and work a chain four and a double crochet into the same space. We're gonna work another V stitch. There we go. Now we work in same way on remaining five sides of hexagon. Hexagon, I don't know why I said con. Uh, 19 spaces between each point space and with a chain one 
and slip stitch into the third stitch of chain four at beginning of round. Okay. Okay, so I guess we are, let me look at the picture. Are we going to be going right on top or are we? Nope, we're working in the chain one spaces. Okay. So we will chain one and work into the chain one space. Chain one and work into the next chain one space. Chain one, double crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one and then again. Now, do we have to do that whole skip a thing? It says to have 19. So I bet the reason we needed to skip two was to ensure that we had 19 up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work this all the way across without skipping anything and see if that winds up being 19 total spaces, meaning these, these spaces between the double crochet. They want 19 of them. One, two, three, four, we have four so far. All right, let's just see. Let's do this. Let me back out just a pinch. Okay, let's see how many squares we have so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One more makes nineteen. And that's going to be. Yeah, we don't skip any. So that's nineteen. Now we make a V stitch. But creating the V stitch, doesn't that give us twenty? Doesn't that become 20? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, that does make it 20. 19 spaces between each point space. I don't, I, I guess, was I supposed to skip something? Let me look at the picture and see if it looks skipped anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't appear so. All right, let me count these spaces that they have worked up. Apparently it's correct. It does wind up actually being 20. They said 19, but even the picture, it shows 20. So we're doing it right. <laughs> Thank goodness for the photos. Okay, chain one. And in the very first square, we make a square. Chain one, work double crochet. Chain one, and in the next chain one space, we work double crochet. Okay, we're gonna do this all the way around, working a V-stitch in all of the corners. And I will be back when it is time to finish this round. Okay, all done with the second round of this like netting round. Now round 25, it says I have slip stitched into the third chain of our starting chain four. So round 25 says to work two single crochet into the next chain space. Pardon my dog. I don't like the way those turned out. They were kind of rolling a little. There we go. Now it says to work one single crochet in each double crochet, taking up top thread only, which means back loop only. So back loop only single crochet in all of the double crochets. And then one single crochet in each chain one space. And then back loop only, double crochet, or back loop only of the double crochet, work a single crochet. Then work a single crochet into the chain one space. Single crochet into the back loop only of the double crochet. Repeat this all the way to the end. And well, let me do that again. And when we get to the next corner, we Work three single crochet into the corner. So you'll work 
one back loop only double crochet or into the double crochet of a single crochet then into the chain one space of the V stitch you'll work three single crochet for a point and then your single crochet in the back loop only and repeat all the way around I will meet you whenever we get back to the beginning I'm gonna go ahead and mark this stitch mark my very first of the single crochet there okay I'll be back when we get back around to the beginning okay all done with that round where we worked the single crochet all the way around now it says to we're on 26th round we're starting 26th round and it says to um, we're gonna work three single crochet into the first stitch now when that when they say first stitch we started off with two single crochet into the V-stitch. So we're working back loop only, of course. And you're gonna work three single crochet into the very first single crochet of the two in the V-stitch. Two and three. Now it says to work one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Okay, so that's one, two, and, th and three. <clears throat> now, it says here, one popcorn in next stitch. So if we remember from back around the beginning, these little popcorn stitches, we're gonna do that again. So we're gonna go from single crochet <clears throat> direct up to double crochet. And we're gonna work five double crochet, one popcorn stitch in the next stitch. Okay, so in the next stitch over, in the back loop only, let's work five single or double crochet. One, two, let me get you down here a little closer. three, four, and five. Now we will come over to the first double crochet, go into that top of that double crochet, come over here and pick up the loop. You know, yeah, I was gonna say, I'll let me rework that, but it worked out fine. Okay, now it says, do we work? We want one single crochet in each of, we have to turn to page 20. It doesn't say to work any chains or anything. Let's come over here to page 20. In the next five stitches. So do we not chain? I mean, if it doesn't say to chain, I guess we don't. So we just jump over here and start working single crochets. One in the back loops two, three, four, and five. So I guess that's right. Okay. Creates like a little, little rounder of a popcorn. These ones are longer. Okay. Okay. And then it says to repeat until there are seven popcorns. So I guess we're going to work seven popcorns between the points. So, okay, here we go. Yarn over and in the next stitch, let's work our five double crochet. One, two, oops. Three, four, and five, pick up the first double crochet, hook into the loop and pull through. Now we come over here to the very next stitch over and start working five single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, 
four and five. Boy, I like this though. This is a nice change. We did so many just straight single crochet, row after row after row. This is a nice change. <laughs> okay, five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. And in case I wasn't clear before, it's five into the same stitch, but I know you guys already know that. Okay, pick up our first double crochet, hook through that loop, pull through. Now in the very next stitch over, start working our first of five single crochet. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this all the way to the end. Hopefully it works out and I have five, or I mean seven popcorn stitch made. That's three, four, and five. Let me just confirm that. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay. All right. I will be back. It looks like it might work out. Okay. I'll be back. Okay. It worked out for me. I've got my seven popcorn. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we started off with three single crochet, and it says here to end with three single crochet to the next point. So one, two, and three. And now we will work three single crochet in the point in the next stitch over. One, two, and three. And then we repeat. So we will start with three single crochet in the next three single crochet back loop one two and three then in the fourth stitch over we start working our first popcorn stitch of this side so okay i'm gonna do this all the way around let me just finish this popcorn with you was three, four, and five, then five single crochet, one, two, three, four and five. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna finish all the sides and come back around to the beginning and let me mark that first stitch. One, two, three, but we put three in the top. So here is my first stitch right here. Okay, I'll see you guys when we get back around to the beginning. Okay, I have completed the first round of popcorn stitches all the way around. Let's get you zoomed in a little and take a look at this. Popcorn work. All right, I worked my last stitch just before the point. Right here is, whoops, here is where our point will be worked. So 27th round, I should be, I really should be marking these rounds there we go 27th round three single crochet into point uh, into point stitch when I just showed you um sorry I'm getting my eyes are getting lost it, it is because it's all like one paragraph <laughs> um Three single crochet into point stitch, one single crochet in each stitch to next point, repeat. Okay, so we're just gonna do one round of single crochet. I'm assuming it's gonna be back loop only. So back loop only, single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Very easy round, I'll be back whenever I get back to the beginning. And so I guess I can start this with you and show you, huh? That's kind of the fun of these videos a little bit, isn't it? So, let's get you in here a little more. Three single crochet into the back loop only point. 
Now one single, oh, before I move on, let me just, one, two, and three. There we go. Now we just work a back loop only, single crochet into every single crochet around. There's three that we started with. And now this looks like a single crochet right here. Well, I suppose this one is technically the three of the three that we started with, isn't it? Because we added another stitch. So I'm going to not work anything in the popcorn and just jump over because it doesn't say to work anything in the popcorn. Let me look. No. It says in each stitch. Does the popcorn count? Maybe it does. Well, you know, there's only one way to find out. So there's one into the popcorn. Now we work into the five single crochet between the popcorns. Well, if you'll go. <laughs> well, my goodness, it doesn't want to, does it? Well, you're gonna. There. <laughs> That's two, three, four, and five. I'm just going to assume we work in this here popcorn stitch right here, the back of it. What I'm working into is this little line right here, directly behind the popcorn stitch. And I suppose it don't matter if we do one or two loops. You can't see it anyways, because it's going to be behind the popcorn stitch. And then we do our five single crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. Now one behind the popcorn. Then we start our five single crochet again. All right, when we get to the end, you can see there are our three single crochet into the corner. In this middle one here, we work our three single crochet right into here. Well, technically into the back loop only. Work your three single crochet and carry on all the way around back to the beginning. And I will meet up with you when we get back to the beginning. Okay, ready to start row number 28 and hopefully the stitch count will be correct because like I said, I wasn't 100% sure that I was supposed to work behind those popcorn stitches, but I feel like we were. Okay, so here is my last stitch of the 27th row. Now it says to work three single crochet into the point, of course, back loop only. One, two, and three. Let me put my stitch marker there. Whoops. Okay, one, two, and three. There we go. And now it says to work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. One and two. And work a popcorn stitch in the next. So yarn over and work five double crochet into the next stitch over. Two. Three. Four and five. Pick up the first double crochet. Hook that loop up. Pull it on through. And now we work uh, one single crochet in each of the next five. So just like this popcorn row down here. There we go. Two, three, 
four and five. Then we work a popcorn stitch and it looks correct. I mean, it looks like it's lining up right in between the two popcorns down below. So I think we were supposed to work behind the popcorn. So yay us, <laughs> no frogging this time. That is three, four and five. Okay. One, two, three, four, there it is. Sometimes my last single crochet could look like a stretched double. And pull that on through and start working our five single crochet. So I'm guessing we're gonna do this just like the last popcorn row. Look at that, perfect, perfectly offset. Okay, but let's see how we work the points. How many stitches before we do the point? Okay, work one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. I'll just show you what I'm reading. We are reading this right here. Work one single crochet <clears throat> in each of the next five stitches, one popcorn stitch in the next. Center stitch between popcorns in the last popcorn row. Repeat from here until there are eight popcorns, one single crochet in each of the next remaining two single crochet to the corner stitch. Then we work three single crochet in the corner stitch. Continue in this way on remaining five sides of hexagon. Then we start our 29th round. Okay, so we will have a popcorn stitch likely right here. And then we will work our last two single crochet before we work our three single crochet into the point. Okay. Well, you know, I'll go ahead and finish this up to the point and then I'll come back and we can work this point together and then we'll go ahead and finish the rest and come back when we get to the beginning. But I will be back to work this point with you guys. Okay, just coming up to my first point. So I've worked my five single crochet and I'm going to work my next popcorn stitch in the, no in the next one, which will be three stitches from the point which will line me up perfectly to have just two stitches left before working my three in the next, three single crochet in the next. Two. Three. Four and five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And now I will work two single crochet, one single crochet, I should say, in each of the next two stitches. One and two. Now I work my three single crochet into the same stitch for a point. Two, three, work two single crochet down the other side, one, and then two, and work a popcorn stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. Five. Okay, and then we work our five single crochet. So let's go ahead and finish this all the way around. And I will come back when I get back to my stitch marker. Okay, so I have made my way all the way back around. I only have two stitches left to work. So let's read on. And it says for the 29th round, repeat the 27th round. So I did read on just a little bit and it's mostly a lot of repeat this round, repeat that round. And if you look at the picture, you'll see clearly why this is how it's ending. So 
we're going to do two more rounds of the double crochet chain one double crochet then we're going to do three rounds of the popcorn ending with two rounds of the double crochet so that's going to be easy enough easy enough so it says to repeat round 27 which is this round right down here and um, when I looked at the picture there is a gap up in what they have up here so we will it, it all it says is to repeat row 27 so we're gonna have to work the math out ourselves as to where we place our gap but I'll be honest I don't think it really matters I think the whole point of the gap is to just not work one extra stitch so I just don't think it matters where exactly we put that gap but let me complete this row with my last two stitches here and then my three single crochet into the tip of the point now oh no 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 that was wrong because we're repeating row 27 we're going to and i remember i went through both loops slip stitch into the point where we normally would put our three single crochet now chain four two three and four and then work another double crochet into the same stitch there we go then we chain one we skip the first stitch and in the next one over we work our double crochet chain one Skip the next stitch and then the next stitch over, which will be right behind the popcorn stitch. We work a double crochet. Skip. After chaining one, of course, skip, work double crochet. Chain one. Skip one. And the next one over, work double crochet. Chain one, skip one, right behind the popcorn, work double crochet. I want to get both of those loops. There we go. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. I think I'll do nine of these. The reason I'm coming up with that number is because we're obviously working with more stitches than we were down here. Down here we did eight. I think I'm going to try nine, see how nine works out. I genuinely don't think it matters though. I think all that they want you to do is to skip one extra stitch just to keep the stitch count, you know, on point for the next one. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work behind the popcorn stitch. Let's see what we have here. One, two, three, <clears throat> excuse me, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more. Chain one, skip one, work double crochet. This makes nine. Nine doesn't exactly put us in the middle, so let me do one more. Maybe we do 10 is the magic number. Chain one, skip one, and the next one, work a double crochet. I mean, it's a little more toward the middle. I just don't think it matters, though. So I'm going to chain one, skip two. One, two, so skip the popcorn, and right next to it, work double crochet chain one skip one work double crochet chain one skip one work double crochet so now we're skipping the popcorn stitches because of what we had just done chain one skip the popcorn stitch work double crochet i'll be back when i get to the other end here coming up to the end here and i have just chained one skip one and it worked out perfectly because the last stitch i need to work for this side is the stitch right before well i kind of wish that that stitch would have been skipped but i think it'll be okay i think it'll be okay well we skipped this one we should have one to skip on this side so now i'm questioning everything i've done in my life up to this point <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> um hmm just look to make sure I only skipped two once. Yeah, 
So I don't, I mean, they're not, it's, look, it's, it's not specific what to do here. It says to repeat row 27. Well, we can't repeat row 27 exactly because row 27 has a totally different stitch count than the row that we're currently working on. So they don't say, you know, work 12 stitches, then work your skip two, and then work however many more. It doesn't say that. Um, um, um. Cause that could, cr oh, you know what? I bet you it's gonna be fine. I bet you it's, I'm just gonna skip one, work my V-stitch. Not gonna sit here and cry over spilt milk, right? I bet you it's gonna be fine. Then we're going to skip one and start this process all over again. I'll work 10. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stick with it. I'm gonna work 10 of them. Then I'm gonna skip two and then work the remaining. And I really think it's gonna be fine as I sit here and question, question it deeply. I, you know what, that's, that's, that's the beauty of these kind of videos. You don't have to follow along with me as I'm working. You get a chance to watch me figure this stuff out ahead of time. This does, this does trouble me. This, I don't think this is right. Okay, I am going to mess around with these numbers off camera and come up with a, with a count that works. I will be back. Okay, guys, I'm starting to think that there is nothing to skip. I feel like I feel like I might have been looking at one, the lower one here and my eyes were confused. It doesn't look like we do skip one. It's just not looking like it. It's just not looking like it. So let's try this without skipping anything at all and let's see what happens. It's just coming up to the end, and I think it's going to work. Skip, work, double crochet, and there you go. Chain one, skip the last stitch, then we work our V-stitch in the point, and it worked out. Huzzah. Okay, then that is how we do it. We don't have to worry about skipping this time. Yeah, I just decided to go back and look at that picture and make sure that I wasn't just seeing things. I was seeing things. We don't have to skip. So I'm going to go ahead and work the rest of the hexagon this way. And I'll be back when we get back around to the beginning. It's coming up to the end of the row now. I've already chained one. So I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch one, two, three into the third chain up. There we go. Now we will slip stitch over into the V stitch, into that chain one space, and do this all over again. Three and four chains, yarn over and work one more double crochet into the V, v stitch, chain one, and into the first square or chain one space. We start working our double crochet, chain one, Next, chain one space over, double crochet. There we go. <laughs> chain one, next space over, and we'll do this all the way around, just like we did before. You will work your last double crochet here of this side, then you will chain one, work a V-stitch, chain one, and begin again working your first double crochet into the first space, and you'll repeat that down to the edge and all the way around. I will be back when we get back to the very first starting V-stitch. I was just sitting here working on this and thinking, these types of bedspreads must have been a group effort. Had to have been. Or else a woman took half a year to make one. And that's probably likely as well. But I am almost convinced that a bedspread like this required all hands on deck, every girl in the house, and possibly even mom's sister, making one or two of these, or three of these each, because you know how long it has taken me to make this one? 
I'm on day three. This is actually day three of making this. Yes, because I can get only so far before my hands start to cramp. I can't just sit and make the whole thing all in one setting. And so I'm thinking to myself, man, this had to have been a group effort. Mom, her daughter or daughters, maybe even a niece, maybe her sister, maybe even her own mother helped her make one or two of the tiles. And then she would assemble them all. And boom, a bedspread that required a group effort, certainly an heirloom to hand down. That's, that's no doubt. It's beautiful, but mm, it's quite a job. Three days to make the one tile. But then again, you know, um, no, yeah. I mean, I suppose a woman could have made it all on her own. It would have taken her several months, in my opinion several months up to half a year or even a little longer. But then again, when the when you see the payoff, it's going to last a lifetime, beyond a lifetime. So suppose it's worth the effort. It's certainly worth the effort. I can't wait just to get the one done. It's so pretty. I may even frame it. I was sitting here thinking, I'm not going to undo this because typically whenever I make a tutorial, I will, un because I, I'm, I'm on very limited means, okay? I am not uh, somebody of a lot of money. And so what I typically do whenever I'm done with a tutorial, I'll unravel it so that I could reuse the yarn later. I'm not going to do that with this. This, this is going to probably go into a beautiful frame and go on my wall as decoration. That's probably what I'm going to do with this. It's just too pretty. It's too nice. It's too special not to have displayed. Okay, let me finish this round. Not let me. I'm going to get back to finishing the round. Okay, just finishing up <clears throat> the second round. I'm going to chain one. One, two, three. Slip stitch into the third chain. Now, without chaining anything at all, we're just going to jump right over into the chain one space of the V-stitch and work two single crochet because the instructions say to repeat row 24 and row 24 was the row where we worked single crochet all the way around and then we start three rounds of the popcorn stitch. Now that we have it figured out pretty well how to make this, this is the direction I'm going to go because I feel like you guys have this down pat pretty well. We worked two single crochet into the point. Now we will work back loop only, single crochet. The next chain one space, we work just a single crochet. Over the double crochet, we work back loop only, single crochet. This is the repeat all the way around, just like we did before. And then you will work three rows of the popcorn stitch. And then finally, two last rows of the double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet. So there really is no need for me to work the rest of this because that is, that is the instructions. It says right here, work the same as the 27th row. And then this just explains how to make the popcorn stitch again. You know how to do that now though. Repeat the same as the 30th row, row, row 40. Repeat the same as the 31st row. Tw um, repeat the same as the 27th row. 35th row is just telling you how to do the V-stitch and whatnot. It, it's all the same. So this is where I'm going to end this portion of it and I'm quite happy with this. I am more than happy with this. I'm gonna finish up one row of single crochet just to clean up the edge. And this is, I'm gonna save this. This is gonna be a wall mounted piece for me. And I think it is so lovely and so beautiful. Let's see what this measures without being fully, fully completed. Cause you may feel like this is enough for you. And you work your one row of single crochet and you can make a bedspread with just this much. You never know. So from point to point, we are at exactly 11 inches. And then from flat edge to flat edge, we are at nine, exactly nine inches. Beautiful, isn't it? 
So that's what you're gonna do. One round of single crochet, three rounds of popcorn stitch, and then finally two more rounds of this work here. And that is the whole tile. So I didn't wanna leave you guys hanging on how I was gonna end this in case you wanna end at this point too. Um, since this is going to be where I'm going to end it, I decided to undo my work. I'm not gonna work the back loop only. And I'm gonna start with three single crochet into the very first point here instead of just the two since I'm not carrying on this is where I'm going to end it I want this to be a defined point and I'm going to work through both loops so that it is a stiffer edge both loops of the double crochets and I feel like that's going to help stiffen it up better and I'm not just going to end on one round of single crochet I'm going to do two rounds of single crochet and then I'm going to end it there that way there is a more defined border and it will help stiffen it up for shaping I am going to block this now I will leave a link in the description to a video that teaches how to block I don't personally have any videos on that myself but there's a lot of wonderful videos out there that teach you how to block your crochet specifically your cotton crochet um, doilies and whatnot and I would recommend blocking this and if you want to hang it up on your wall like I am make it a wall piece I would get a little spray starch as well. That's just going to help get some um, Scotch Guard, and that will also help keep it from yellowing for a while. So this is what I am opting to do. I didn't want to just leave you hanging. I wanted you guys to see how I am ending this. Now... Uh, I will show you what it looks like in the end and then I'm going to show you some screenshots of the um, the half tile. If you want to make the full blanket, you're going to need to make half tiles. So there's no sense in me showing you a tutorial on how to do this since you already know how they want you to do the popcorns and everything else. And I've also noticed with the half tiles, you don't work the water lily. You're not, so the half tiles are going to go by very fast for you. So I'm going to show you some, I'm going to hold the pattern up like this, and then you can just pause your screen and work that round, okay? There's no need for me to tell you how to do that since you already know how to do the popcorns, how to work the back loop only, and everything else. So that's going to be really helpful for you. And I'm also going to show you a screenshot of the diagram, the layout of how they want you to lay it out. But I'll be back in just a second and show you my final result of where I'm choosing to end. Okay, here it is with the two rounds of the single crochet border. I'm really happy with it. I really, really like it. And, and it's going to look so much better once it's been blocked and starched. And then I will put it on the wall. Oh, I'm going to love this. This is so pretty. And when you do spray a little starch on there, I would absolutely, you know, shape out this portion here. Oh, that's going to be so nice on the wall. So there it is. This is where I'm choosing to end it. Now stay tuned because I'm going to show you some screenshots here or where you can, not screenshots, but where you can pause the video and read the instructions to make the half tile. Okay? So for making the half tile, and you can pause, let me, let me do this so that it's easier for you to see where we're at. Half hexagon, and you can pause the screen right here. Okay, now let's continue. Where are we at? Um, this is fourth row. Okay, here is how you complete the fourth row, right where the yellow this is the end of the fourth row here, actually. There. That is the end of the fourth row, right here. Now we start the fifth row, which is right here. 
Let me get another, another square. Okay, here is row five to this point here. Go ahead and pause your screen. Now let me show you row six. Okay, this is all row six right here. Go ahead and pause your screen. This is row six from here to here because this is row seven. Okay, now I will show you row seven. This is row seven from here to here. Pause your screen. Might make it easier if I do this. Here is row eight from here to here. And now row nine this is row nine. It says right here, row nine. This is all row nine. Now row 10 here is row 10. Now row 11, the start of row 11. And then here is where it is finished. Okay, moving on. This is going to be row 13 to row 17, right here. See, this is where we start row 18. So let me cover this up a little bit. And here you go. This is going to be row 13 to row 18, right here. Okay, now let's look at row 19 or 18. Okay. Here is row 18. And now row 19. Hmm. Is row 19. It says to same as 11th row, 20 spaces between the corner spaces. Now, 20th row, same as 12th. So let's cover that up for you and you can pause the screen here. This is row 20, all the way to here. From now on, follow the design as given for the last 15 rows of the full hexagon. Here is your remaining instructions right here. Pause your screen. Okay, and here is how everything is to be arranged. You have the diagram there. And the wording. Pause your screen there. You, in fact, well, I want you to be able to read it, so I'll hold that up. And now there is the diagram. Oops. Okay. And that will make, and you can pause your screen on this as well so that you get a good look at this. This is what, this is what we are making. You, so you can pause your screen here. And you can pause your screen on this so that you can have this to look back at like I did so many times and it was quite helpful. So there you go. Okay. And I'm not even joking. I'm gonna mount this on my wall. I'm gonna put it in a pretty frame and I'm gonna put it on the wall because it is so stinking gorgeous. It's a work of art. It's absolutely a work of art. Well, I thank you guys so much for making this with me. And even if you didn't make it, you just hung out to watch the process. I can't thank you enough for that too because it keeps me so much company. I, I know I'm just talking to a camera, but it's strange because in my mind, I, I really feel like I'm talking to all of you and I know so many of you on a first name basis. So I feel like I'm actually talking to you guys. I can see your faces from your pictures and I can't thank you enough for being with me on this. And this is going to be so much fun. 
The next project I have to make is not going to be a blanket. It's going to be something smaller and simpler, but it's a surprise. It's something that I think would actually make for a great gift, if not for yourself. I will see you guys in the next one. I love you guys so much. And remember, keep it classy. Keep it vintage.